Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our US Emily Step 1 prep series. Today, we are joined by Dr. Aksa Chaudhry, where she's going to break down the US Emily prep question that we posed on our social media just last week. Um, so without further ado, welcome to the series. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, HIV and its associated opportunistic infections. So. Right now, the focus has been on the COVID-19 pandemic. That's been the forefront of everything that's been discussed in the medical community. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other diseases that are still just as prevalent. And um, HIV is one of those that is still pretty prevalent. And we still want to have a good understanding of the underlying pathophysiology and the opportunistic infections that come along with it. So that once you do go into practice and you do come across patients um, with HIV or if they have advanced AIDS, that you are able to give them the proper treatment that they need. Um, so here you have our names, myself and my other wonderful co-counselors, Dr. Russell Heckburn and Dr. Dewan Kinchlow. If you ever want to reach out to us, if you have any questions regarding the webinars or, you know, medical school, the field of medicine, you can always reach us at usmle at mail.sgsm.org. So the question that we posted was a 26-year-old man. He has a history of HIV diagnosed two months ago. He comes in with a white plaque on his tongue. He's currently on Favarin, Tenofovir, and Enterocytivine. He's in a monogamous relationship with his boyfriend, who is HIV negative. Um, he denies alcohol, tobacco, and illicit drug use. His CD4 count is 180. And on physical exam, he's a very slender man with pale complexion. His blood pressure is 141 over 91, a respiratory rate of 17. And the white plaques on the patient's tongues can be scraped off. So in this patient, um, which disease do we need to give prophylaxis for? Is it A, Cryptococcus neoformans, B, Cryptosporidium, C, Mycobacterium avium complex, uh, D, Pneumocystis gerevechi, or E, Toxoplasma, uh, Toxoplasma gondii? So when I approach this question, there's a couple of things that I look at. So the first thing is that we're looking for a prophylactic medication. He's already being treated for his HIV infection. We need to give him something else on top of that. And he has a history. Two months ago, he was diagnosed. So this has been an ongoing um, problem for him. And he also has a white plaque on his tongue. The white plaque could be one of two things. It could be a candidal infection or it could be um, a cancer like carioleukoplakia. But since it is scrapable, that points more to an infectious cause being candida rather than a cancer. So the candida is telling us that he has some opportunistic infections, and this is due to his low CD4 count, which makes him prone to other um, diseases. So based off of that information and the fact that his CD4 count is now 180, the correct answer in this case is pneumocystis gerevechiae. So why is this the case? So this HIV patient, his CD4 count is less than 200 and lymphocyte percentage below 14%, and he also has some weight loss, and he has oral candidiasis. So all of this points towards a requirement for prophylaxis against pneumocystis uh, gerevechiae with trimethyl trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. But once his CD4 count improves, the prophylactic medication can be discontinued. So a little bit about HIV. Um, there's HIV-1 and HIV-2, two different um, forms of the same disease that a person can be infected with. Um, the virus will penetrate cells that are CD4 positive using the CD4 receptor and CCR5 or the CXCCR4 receptor, depending on if it's an early stage disease or later in the stage. And as the infection takes over, the HIV um, virus will continue to replicate and the CD4 count will decrease. So early in the infection, in the primary stages, the CD4 count will still be relatively around normal. But as the weeks and months go by, the CD4 count is going to drastically decrease and the HIV RNA load is going to increase. And if the patient is not treated, this could lead to AIDS as well and other opportunistic infections. So what are some of these opportunistic infections that the patient is predisposed to? Depends on their CD4 count. 
So if they have a CD for a count of less than 500, um, it could be Candida albicans, which leads to oral thrush, which was the white plaques on our patient, um, Epstein-Barr virus, which would lead to oral hairy leukoplakia, um, HHV-8, which could lead to Kaposi sarcoma, or even HPV, which could lead to squamous cell carcinoma at sites of sexual contact. For a uh, CD4 count of less than 200, the patients are predisposed to his histoplasma capsulatum, which is a fungal infection, HIV dementia, uh, JC virus reactivation, which can lead to PML, or pneumocystis gerevice, which will lead to pneumonia. Now, if their CD4 count continues to drop or they don't seek out treatment, they could be predisposed to Aspergillus fumigatus, which can lead to hemoptysis and pleuritic chest pain, um, Bartonella, which is a, can lead to bacillary angiomatosis, uh, infections with Cryptococcus neoformans, which can predispose to meningitis, or Cryptosporidium, which leads to chronic watery diarrhea, also Mycobacterium avium complex, which will have nonspecific symptoms, or even Toxoplasma gondii, which will, can lead to brain abscesses. So we want to give this patient prophylaxis so that if they do come into contact with any of these pathogens, they won't have any serious sequela. So if your CD4 count is less than 200, you want to prophylax against pneumocystis pneumonia, and you're going to give trimethoprim sulfamethoxyl combination. For CD4 count less than 100, we also want to um, give some protection against toxoplasmosis, but luckily it's the same medication that will cover both pneumocystis as well as toxoplasmosis, so we can give them, um, again, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. But if their CD4 counts do improve, then you can go ahead and take them off of the prophylactic medication. So a little bit about the mechanism of action. So trimethoprim will inhibit dihydrofolate reductase, which will disrupt the purine and pyrimidine synthesis, so no DNA or RNA is going to be produced. Um, with sulfamethoxazole, you in um, inhibit dihydrofolate dihydroptrate synthase, which um, also disrupts folate synthesis, synthesis, which is also a part of the purine pyrimidine pathway. Um, it's just different um, mechanisms by which you can achieve the same goal. Now, why we give these in combination is that if you give one or the other, they're bacteriostatic. So they will prevent the replication of bacteria, but they won't kill the bacteria. So if we get the combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole together, they become bactericidal and they will actually kill off the bacteria. So a little bit about the other options. Um, crypto Cryptococcus neoformans leads to meningitis and pulmonary disease in AIDS patients, but we don't have any prophylaxis against that. Um, treat, we would treat the meningitis if they do happen to get that with amphotericin B and flucytosine, but if there is intolerance to amphotericin, it is a pretty strong drug, fluconazole can be used instead. Um, cryptosporidium in HIV patients is characterized by persistent enterocolitis with perfused watery diarrhea. And prophylaxis is not provided for cryptosporidium, but the best treatment um, will involve improving the patient's immune function through the use of antiretroviral therapy. And patients can be given diphenoxylate with atropine to symptomatically treat the diarrhea. And mycobacterium avium complex is also another disease um, that is prevalent among patients with HIV. And this occurs when the CD4 count is less than 50. Um, and you can give them prophylaxis with azithromycin or clarithromycin once it gets to that range of 50. Patients with um, the MAC disease can present with fever, night sweats, diarrhea, weight loss, anemia, and elevated serum alkaline phosphatase levels. And the last answer option choice, toxoplasmosis, um, that would present with local neurologic deficits. Uh, but we do give prophylaxis with um, TMP SMX when the CD4 count is less than 100 to help avoid that. So thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Anything else that we'd like to um, let them know? No, just guys, please make sure to subscribe. Give us a big thumbs up. Like if you like these videos, if they're helping you, we want to keep making them for you guys. Um, it does take up a lot of our time. So as much as we want to do these, we want to make sure that you guys are enjoying them. So if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave a comment below and we'll see you guys next week.